Hey guys, today we're going to talk about this problem, Polycarp restores permutation, and when is it okay to give up? When is it okay to stop trying the problem? So you can see that I was really struggling with this problem yesterday. I was trying to solve it, and I started at like 2240, and I couldn't solve it, and I just gave up here, and I looked up the solution at 2350, so more than one hour on the same problem. And the thing is, I'll show you that I was just completely focusing on the wrong thing. And so no matter how much longer I tried, I would have probably not got the accepted answer until like five hours later. And that would have just been not efficient. So it's worth it to stop, look up the solution. And the key thing is you need to adapt the solution to your style. So I'll show you how I did that in this problem. And I think that I really internalized the concept by doing this strategy. So. The problem is as follows. So there is this Polycarp guy and he made a permutation of the first n natural numbers, but then he forgot it. And now he only remembers the differences between his numbers. And the thing is, if you knew, for example, the first or the last element in the permutation, then it would be really easy to recover all of the original elements of the permutation you have this formula and you can very easily just isolate one of these two terms but the thing is you don't know the first or the last elements so the first thing that came to my mind is okay just try all of the possible first or last elements in the permutation because we know it is a permutation so we have an upper and lower bound for those for that so like i'm trying to fix the last arbitrarily fix the last element in the permutation to recover all of the remaining values. And I know that the last element can at most be uh, the length. So this is length five. The most that you can have at the end is five and the minimum is one. So I have those bounds. I can just loop through those bounds and see if the recovered permutation is actually a permutation. If so, I found the solution, right? So I tried that here. So here I'm just taking uh, the input. This is just a function that checks if a candidate vector is indeed a permutation of the first n natural numbers. And yeah, here I was just taking the input and then what I, what I did is just loop through all of the possible last values and then recover all of the permutation, check if it is actually a permutation and if so, print it. And then I just repeat that over and over again until I possibly find one and if I don't, I output minus one because it means that it's impossible. And the thing is, this was correct, but it didn't work because it exceeded the time limit, which is two seconds. And so then I just kept trying to optimize the solution. I was getting wrong answers, still time limit exceeded and so on. And at this point I was feeling very frustrated and I was trying to understand how to find the correct starting point. So I was saying like, there must be some math rule that tells me the first or the last uh, element in the permutation. And the thing is, that is not true, but you don't care about it. You don't care about which is the first or the last element. Because all, all of the information that is given to you here is in terms of differences between elements. So you can literally try any arbitrary element and you can place it at the end or at the beginning to recover the remaining sequence. And any number will do because you can try like 3000 and recover what the permutation would be if the first element was 3000. And now you could just scale it back down to the range of numbers that you are interested in because everything can slide up and down because you only have differences. So even if you start with 9 million, you can still bring it down to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on, right? So that's the key. So I had seen a solution but I really didn't like it. So this was not at all written in my style, but I tried to understand it. And then the key thing, the key part about this strategy is I optimized it and I made it my own. So now I have that concept. So I'm trying with a random number. So you can see that instead of looping through all of the possible last values, I'm just saying, okay, let's see what happens, what permutation gets recovered if I say that the last element was this one. Right? So you can see how this fits into the previous solution that I was attempting, that was giving a time limit exceeded. So now I'm just trying with a random last element, I'm recovering the permutation, and then I'm saying, okay, now that I've recovered the permutation with an arbitrary number, 
what is the minimum element in the permutation that was recovered. And then with that, I know that I can slide the permutation, the candidate, down so that the minimum element now becomes one, right? And so because I want the minimum element to become one, let's say that the minimum was five, I want to reduce it by four, right? So I just remove uh, five and add one. And this even works with negative numbers, by the way. And so by doing this, I have now created a mapping between my recovered permutation and what would, what would be the correct permutation if last was the correct last value. So you can see I'm not even interested in finding which is the correct last value. I'm just saying, would it be a valid permutation if I just scaled all of the numbers, if I just slide them down so that they are in the correct range? Do they actually end up in the correct range? And the answer can be no. For example, if I have one element which is just outside of the number that is given as an input, or if it, if it is used twice, so I'm keeping all of the numbers that have been used in a set, and if a number is out of the range or it has been already used, then it means that it will not be a permutation because it is either too big or it has been used twice. And Otherwise, if this never happens, then I'm sure that you can indeed make a permutation and these are the correct value. It's just the randomly made numbers, then you scale them back down to their correct scale and you output them and that's it. So yeah, hopefully this has been uh, helpful for you. And if you want to know why I switched from JavaScript and lead code to C++, uh, you can ask me in the comments and I'll make a video about it. So that's it for me today. Thank you for watching and bye.